Remember that in symmetric key encryption, the same key is used to both encrypt and decrypt. Let me present a simple example of that. So one of the simplest and maybe oldest examples of a, an encryption system that uses a key is something called a substitution cipher. So let's say I have a message, um, and we'll say that that message is a message. And I'm Alice, and I want to transmit that message over this insecure channel over to Bob. Um, and again, we don't, Bob has funny eyes today. Um, we don't uh, trust the communication channel between us. So Alice, if Alice sends a message, then anyone who can, um, anyone who can observe messages that pass over this channel is going to be able to uh, capture the message and see what Alice and Bob are saying to each other. And that's what they're trying to avoid. So let's, let's think of a very, very simple way that Alice can transform this message uh, using a key so that Bob can decrypt it. So a substitution cipher, what it does is it takes each part of the input and it transforms it in some way using essentially a table. So let's imagine that I have a table uh, that spans the entire alphabet and, and this would be the key for this particular system. So my table has to map every letter in the alphabet and things like spaces, for example, because this a message has a space in it. So I would need a blank space as well. Um, and this table maps all of these to other values. So let's say, in this case, I'll just use random values. Let's say I map A to Z, B to D, C to F, and I map the empty space to K. So as long as I as as long as every um, every part of the message maps to some other part, and as long as Bob can invert this transformation. So for example, if both A, B, and C all map to Z, then this substitution cipher is not going to work very well because when Bob gets the message, if he sees a Z, he doesn't know whether it's A, B, or C. So this, uh, this sort of key has to be invertible. So every unit of the input maps to a single unique output. Okay, so what Alice would do, now remember, in symmetric key encryption, Alice and Bob have to somehow agree on this key beforehand. So Alice and Bob have to both have this key, in this case, this mapping table. And so what Alice would do is she would take this message, this would be M, and to create the ciphertext, she would simply replace every letter in M according to this lookup table. So let's see, A goes to Z. Um, I know that, here's another A, it goes to Z. I know that, well, the space goes to K. Let's just make up some other values here. Let's say that M goes to P, E goes to Y, S goes to T, G goes to W, and E goes to Y. So here's my ciphertext. Here's my encrypted message. Okay? And again, the way, the way that I've transform this message is I've taken my original message and I've just looked up every character in it, including the blank space, in my table and I've replaced every character with whatever character is in this table. Now you can imagine I can create lots and lots and lots of these tables and I want the tables to be pretty random because if they're not, then somebody might be able to decrypt the message just by using a table that I've used previously. But you can imagine that there's lots of these different tables just by shuffling the letters around on this side, I can create lots of different keys for this particular encryption system that Alice and Bob could potentially use. Okay, so now Alice transmits this across this insecure channel and anybody who sees this message is just gonna see this sort of random meaningless uh, string of characters and they're not going to know that what Alice actually said to Bob is a message. When Bob gets the message, what he's going to do is he's going to use this table to invert the process. So he's going to take the Z and he's going to look it up on this side of the table and he's going to say, okay, um, that's A. He's going to see the K, he's going to look it up over here, he's going to say, okay, that's a space. Okay, he's going to see the P and he's going to look up here and he says M and you just repeat this process to decrypt the message that Alice sent.
So this is a very, very simple example of a crypto system, as we'll call it, and uh, a simple that's based on a simple substitution cipher. Now, a crypt, uh, uh, an encryption system like this is extremely insecure. You would never use this in the real world because there are very, very easy ways to attack simple uh, systems like this. So for example, in the English language, there are a lot of words that are very, very common. For example, the word the. So what I could do in order to try to break this system is I could use that if I can see a bunch of encrypted text I can look for common words and I can try to map those common words into this table and I can use that to attack the system and eventually break it. But one of the fant you know, fantastic things about computers is that computers have made it possible to build symmetric key encryption systems that are extremely sophisticated and extremely hard to break. Now on the other hand, computers are also used by your adversary to break the crypto system. So just as computers can be used to enable really, really strong encryption, Computers have also made us think about an adversary that has an enormous amount of computational power. If you're sending messages across this channel and you're worried, for example, that the US government or the National Security Agency is eavesdropping on you, you have to assume that they have huge warehouses full of really powerful computers that they can use to do a lot of math to try to break your encryption system. But on the other hand, even with a reasonably strong computer, you can perform extremely secure um, symmetric key encryption and ensure that it's almost impossible or it would take a long, 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 long time and a lot of computational resources for an adversary to break uh, that system and to decrypt any of your messages.